Alrighty, so we just talked about the idea that moving a wire into a magnetic field is kind of like plowing up snow, okay? Not really plowing up snow, but you're really plowing up magnetic field. You're not really plowing up magnetic field, you're really uh, plowing up magnetic field, um, how much magnetic field is in your shovel, if you want to think about it that way. Okay, so we're going to look at this idea of epsilon equals BBL now in a slightly different way. We're going to look at this equation and just reformulate that and say, well, we have B times the distance that we move to the right, right, at constant speed, per time, times R. Okay, uh, sorry, not R, but L, that's the letter we're using. So that's using the same language. So in a certain amount of time, our snowplow moves to the right a certain distance d. Okay? So this would be a distance d. Moves d in t. That makes sense. And of course, it must be true that v is equal to d over t if it is a constant speed. But that means that when we move it to the right, we move it a certain distance d over to the right. So when we move from this position over to the right position, so that's the initial position, then a little while later, right, our wire is here. There we go. Well, what has happened? There has been a change of the area available for the magnetic field to flow through, right? So initially, our area for the field to flow through was this. That's the area the field had been flowing through. And now the field is actually also flowing through this additional area. So we have now the orange area and the white area. We can kind of summarize that as, well, that's A0, right? That is the final A, right? Uh, sorry, A uh, is, uh, sorry, uh, A0, ah, crap. So the final area is, that's initial area, and then the change in the area is the orange, sorry, right? And then the final area would be A0 plus Delta A. So the orange area that we have here is how much the area has changed through which the magnetic field flows. Okay, good. We'll give that a name and we'll say that's the change in magnetic flux. So the area through which field is going times the magnetic field is the magnetic flux. This should remind you of Gauss's law for electrostatics where we talk about electric flux. So just for uh, just for reminding you about that, integral E dA is equal to Q inside divided by epsilon naught. That is Gauss's law for electric fields. So the idea of a magnetic flux shouldn't come too surprising. So the idea in general will be an integral of B dA, but in this specific case, because we're, we've got everything nicely at right angles. Uh, in the same direction. Um, so everything is not requiring an integral, it's just constant, also magnetic field. Therefore, what we have here is that the um, area here times the magnetic field here is the change in field flux. Okay, so it would be B delta A over T. Okay, or we can say this is equal to the change in magnetic flux divided by time, where we're going to define magnetic flux technically as the integral of E, I'm oh, sorry, B dA. Okay? And if the area, if the magnetic field is constant, and our area is perpendicular to the field that is straight up just B times A equals B times A um, if B constant and uniform and if A is 
perpendicular to B. Now, you might ask, well, what the freak? If A is perpendicular to B, wouldn't the dot product equal to zero? That's correct. So we're being a little bit schnickily here because we're saying A is perpendicular to B, and now we're stepping back for a second and thinking about if we're going to associate, and we actually did this before, so just a reminder about this, A, the area in a colloquial sense, is perpendicular to B, but that means that if the area is perpendicular to B, right, this is B, this is A, they're perpendicular, fine. Well, the vector A associated with this area is a vector that's perpendicular to that area, okay? This is kind of hard to remember. So if this is true, if A is perpendicular, so globally this is true, then it's also true that A vector is parallel to B vector, and that means that we don't have to worry about the uh, cosine here, because cosine zero is one. So let's come back to our equation. We found that epsilon is equal to the change in flux over time for a constant change. You kind of already kind of can guess where this is going. If we're saying that for a constant magnetic field that's uniform, important uh, two things here, constant means uh, you, uh, does not change with time, okay? Uniform means the same everywhere. So if it's uniform and constant, then delta phi in this case is simply caused by the motion of our loop, but we could change the flux in different ways. We could also change the flux by changing the magnetic field strength. We could change it by manipulating the area or the angle of the area. So in general, this thing here, well, that's gonna be a derivative, pretty obvious, right? So we're gonna take that equation and generalize it. into epsilon is equal to minus d phi dt. Oopsie, sorry, I tried the minus sign already there. Okay, we do normally put a minus sign in there, and we'll get to that in just a sec. This thing is called Faraday's Law, and this minus sign specifically refers to Lenz's Law, and we'll get into what that means right now. Okay, so if we change the flux as a function of time through a loop, there will be an associated EMF which acts as if it was a voltage difference, effectively. So under normal circumstances, it will generate a current, and of course the current will then normally follow Ohm's law, generally. Okay, so um, we can generally just plug epsilon in here as if it was a voltage difference, even though it's like, between what point it is, it's like all the way around, like between what and what, it's like hard to understand. But anyway, for our practical purposes, if we know the resistance of that loop, we know the EMF induced, we can figure out how much current will flow. So that's the main point, Faraday's law. Now let's think for a second what they're trying to do with the not minus sign. Because the minus sign is confusing as to what that even means, okay? We're changing the flux. The flux is a vector, okay? Um, sorry, a number, uh, but what do, sign does it have? Positive, negative? And the EMF, the an electromagnetic force, is about how much it's moved by which direction it is. So the minus sign is really a statement about the direction that the current will flow. And to answer that question, we'll come back to the original thing and point something out that I kind of, like a magician, didn't bring up and we didn't think about, or you didn't think about it. Maybe you did think about it, that's good. If you did think about it, that's great. So we said, okay, there's a current flowing. There's a current flowing in this loop. A current flowing in a loop. Why was the current flowing in the loop? Because the charge experienced a force because they were moving inside a magnetic field. Well, if there's a current moving in a loop, that means that there's also going to be an associated magnetic field, okay? A loop, a wire, a moving charge, all of those have associated with them a magnetic field. So what does that mean? It means we can look at the right-hand rule and say, okay, we have this magnetic field in white that we're pushing our wire into, okay? 
And now I will label that as the external magnetic field. External magnetic field, right? External magnetic field. That's the magnetic field that was there. We had a north pole sitting in front of the board, a south pole sitting behind the board. We're pushing that loop into that magnetic field. The external magnetic field is provided by an outside permanent magnet or an outside solenoid providing us with a magnetic field. But as we push this loop into that magnetic field, that magnetic flux changing will generate an EMF in this loop and there will be a current. We just talked about that. Faraday's law says that will happen. But here's the twist. The twist is that current itself will then in turn generate a magnetic field induced by the wire. Okay? So the induced magnetic field will be um, which direction? The magnetic field that's induced will be generated. Well, let's figure it out. We've got the loop going this way. That means the magnetic field generated by the loop is towards us. Towards us. The induced magnetic field is towards us. Running out of colors here, let's use everybody favorite color brown. So there's a magnetic field coming out that's generated by this thing. We're going to put a fat brown dot in here and say, there you go. That's the induced magnetic field. And that induced magnetic field associated with it has also flux because that field flowing through this area has flux introduced. Well, that's a change in flux because we had flux it became more because of the magnetic field that we're scooping up with our wire. In turn, the induced magnetic field will be such that we will now reduce the magnetic field flux change, which is good because otherwise we would have a reinforcing loop. Okay? The idea being, as we push this loop into this magnetic field, the changing flux will cause a current according to Faraday's law. Faraday's law says that'll happen. Good. Now Faraday's law, we get a current. That current in turn will then also generate a magnetic field. And the magnetic field has associated with it a flux, which will be an added flux change on our loop. And thank God that flux change opposes the original flux change. Otherwise, we'd have a reinforcing effect. And as an effect, then the universe would end because we would just keep generating more and more current and then the whole world blows. So we can formulate this in the statement about Lenz's law. And that's what that minus sign refers to. It says the opposite. Lenz's law says the induced will induced current generates a flux change opposing the original flux change causing the induced current. Okay, and we will actually uh, find, um, use a way to remember how to apply this, and I'll introduce it in the next video. It's called Lenz's Llama Ladder. Um, that's where we're going with this, but for now, I think I'm going to call it quits here on this video and, and just call this the introduction to Faraday's Law and introduction to uh, Lenz's Law and Lenz's Llama Ladder will wait till next time.